Hi everybody, Peter of England. July the 5th, post-election day rant, I'm going to call this. Um, as we were all told in the weeks preceding the, uh, the voting day, July the 4th, 2024, we were all told and there was pro prognostications of who was going to win and that is a very, very um, uh, suspicious kind of action, generally. Uh, and in this particular case, it was totally accurate. The Labour Party, that uh, party that's been out of power uh, for 14 years, has suddenly now been heralded as the saviour for the, uh, the United Kingdom, the electorate, the people, uh, and it's there with Starmer to solve everything. Uh, however, many of you should be quite aware um, that the voting process generally is, is false, it's faux, it's staged. Democracy, to all intents and purposes, is as dead as disco. And the main controlling actions within the so-called uh, electorate um, first-past-the-post system is controlled by two, two, uh, two principal entities. One is the Electoral Commission. And the second one is what's called the returning officer. For those of you who are familiar with United States politics, um, hark back to the last um, presidential election and you can see that the uh, integrity of the ballot and how it's cast um, calls into question in many instances um, those people who are overseeing the ballot box. Now, one of the biggest problems is, and what's been uh, educated and brainwashed into the electorate for the past God knows how many years, is this notion of the secret ballot. The problem with the secret ballot is nobody really knows what was in the box. So 100 people could go in and place their vote for blue, but red wins because, yes, you guessed it, the masonically controlled um, returning officer on the advice and the jamming, uh, sorry, the juicing in within the Electoral Commission framework, which is nothing more than a Masonic control web, ensures that red gets in when they want red, and when it's time for a switch to blue, we get the blue. So, that yeah, the, the, the message really today is for all of those who didn't go out and vote, well done. For all those who did go out and vote, uh, I think I'm going to put in, the, uh, uh, in the, uh, the, the video to watch box why you should never vote or why you should never put an X uh, on, a, uh, uh, on a ballot because it symbolizes something very, very profound and it's something that is, is a trick. So, in effect, uh, the trickery continues, um, and what I see in the papers today, July the 5th, I think it was in the Telegraph, the first thing that gets mentioned, strangely enough, wasn't covered in the weeks preceding the election, and the first thing we see is that the First Lady, yeah, Keir Starmer's wife, is, is Jewish. Um, and is a, a, a practicing, I wouldn't say necessarily an orthodox Jew, but now what we have therefore is a partnership which is ostensibly um, geared or traversed towards pro-Israel sentiment. In and of, my, of itself that doesn't mean so much, but when you consider what has been the mainstay of the political um, demonstrative uh, rally field over the last year or two, which has been anything other than pro-Israel. It's been pro-Hamas, pro-Gaza, pro-liberation. Pro you have to ask yourself, why is this now being mentioned on the very first day that the First Lady is Jewish? They could have kept that quiet. The next thing we see in the very same protocol is the first thing that the new Prime Minister has to do is produce or write three letters of what's called letters of last resort, which I must admit I'd never heard of before. And what that is, is um, the contingency written by the Prime Minister, obviously on advice, 
as to what is to happen or what is to be done if there is what's called a, um, uh, a destruction of the continuation of power. So what that means is if the Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister and the other people all get taken out by something, then these letters of last resort are commands to the uh, submarine uh, captains, those who uh, are controlling the, the Trident submarines, as to what action they need to take if that happens when they receive one of these letters. So. I don't think that's a harbinger of any good news. I think that the, the, um, the, the mandarins of power, the people who are controlling the agenda, the continuous civil servant um, gophers who are receiving their advice from the, the puppet masters in the background are well on their way to furthering the next agenda and Keir Starmer, a juiced in from day one, satanic operative, a Masonic controlled agent isn't going to be helping you much. What we need also to see is that, or to consider, is look what we've had with, with this incumbent now, Starmer, uh, taking us into about the 30, it'll probably with his, his first term, 30 years of Blair, uh, Brown, Cameron, with, with Clegg, who then ran off the nice liberal dem to become the leading spokesman for Zuckerberg's Facebook. We then had Johnson, we had uh, Liz Truss, uh, then we've got Sunak, and now we've got Starmer. So the, the currency that the establishment sells to you, the public, is that of hope. And it's always the currency of how long can that particular individual um, deceive and lead astray with the new concept of everything's going to change until the public get either tired of it or some type of dropping the ball incident where they or him or her gets sacrificed for the common good. So what we've got is a, a, a unity party. We have the Liberal Dems, we've got the Reform UK, I am sorry to say, um, and we've got Labour and conservatives bringing up that, that, um, that basket of devilry. Um, and I, I like the fact that I, I've touched on this, uh, this Farage uh, phenomenon because I used to be a supporter. When he was leading the team uh, for UKIP, when he was doing the, uh, the good work uh, for the, 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 the Brexit um, referendum, which he succeeded in, in having, um, I thought this was a very good idea, anything that took us away. But the more and more I see the association with Donald Trump, the more I ask you the question, do you think it is not strange that all of a sudden, here in 2024, when the game plan is being ramped up quite dramatically, we have elections called uh, quickly, or promptly, or in a panic, by Sunak, who, according to Andrew Bridgen, does not want to be a wartime prime minister, quote. Then we've got Macron doing the same thing in France. We've also had, in March, uh, Vladimir Putin uh, winning his election for the obvious next term. But we've also got now the um, uh, election bandwagon for the presidential nominee running in the United States. So we've got something going on here which is changing. And so uh, what I'm coming down to here uh, is that you're going to have to do something and not just keep sitting on the pot. You've got to have a piss or get off it, as they say. Now, why I'm mentioning this um, is, is primarily because I've gone on and on before about the, the necessity for you to eject the personage or the, eject the, the, the name of association with the person. So I want you to go to area52.life and look up the, the section on two things that I still and continuously want you to do. And I'm almost getting uh, sick and tired of crying wolf because eventually that wolf is not going to appear at your door. It's at your door. It just hasn't rung the bell. 
So it's the declaration of divorce that I'm insisting that you go and consider. Um, and to, to become a member of Area 52. And why that is very necessary, I'm going to, I'm going to go to, to now. So we've got a closed system. It's just carried on into its, uh, its uh, obvious outcome with this election in the United Kingdom. We're probably going to see the far right with Marine Le Pen coming through in, in France with the voting, I think it's, uh, it's this very weekend. Um, July the 4th also for the, call, the calling of an election is also most unusual in and of itself. Um, but all in all, what we've got is the wake of the boat as you look back over the past 30 years with all those politicians from Blair and Brown and Cameron, etc. What you can see is the wake of the boat has impoverished everyone. Everything on every level has got worse. There is not one institution from the 1970s or 80s even that you can actually say is in better condition than it was. The judiciary, the legal system, um, the courts generally, NHS, housing, the roads, taxation, the post office, and on and on and on it goes. So we're into a scenario where uh, you've got to begin to wake up to the fact that it's fixed. It's fixed from day one. And as uh, I think it was uh, George Osborne uh, and David Cameron said to Andrew Bridgen when he actually went and had a meeting with them and said, we don't want more politics, we want more policies when he was trying to basically say, we've got some great ideas, but they just never seem to get out there. I'm paraphrasing you, uh, Andrew, so excuse me, but I think that's the main sentiment that you put across. What they said to him, quote, is, you don't understand, Andrew, it's just a game, okay? And that's what it is. On a macro level, there is a game running. On the micro level, they're shuffling the pieces around the chessboard. And I'm afraid to say as much as the eloquence and uh, f sincerity of someone like Nigel Farage now, who has become a member of parliament uh, for the first time, um, what I'd have to say is you don't get into that position if you're a danger to the authority or the establishment. There's got to be an agenda. And I wouldn't be surprised if he was briefed on the, uh, the Brexit, if he wasn't designed to cause mayhem and dissension and a polarization over four and a half years for the British public before they knew we were going to get into this pandemic scenario. So that alone, eight, eight and a half, nine years of severe turbulence for a populace isn't very good. The next thing that I want to touch on is the, the four people. So I don't know whether it's three plus Farage or whether it's Farage plus four, but in total it seems like there are four um, members of parliament for reform. And what I'd like to find out from you out there, please make comments down below um, if you can help, um, who these other uh, successful MPs are, uh, if you know what their backgrounds are and why these favoured few have been allowed to gently sneak in to Westminster because um, Nigel Farage's plan is for evidently the 2000 and uh, is it nine elections. That's the idea when they want to come to the fore. Now, why I know this is a setup and for all of those out there who doubt it, is for the simple reason that an individual that I mentioned before, who I find to be seemingly one of the most honest uh, MPs um, that was until this election, and now has been deselected not only by the, the force of the Conservative uh, Central Office, but also um, was not welcomed as a potential reform candidate by Tice and Farage and his group. Now, why that in and of itself is very, very important is that for the past 14 years, the incumbent um, 
uh, parliamentarian for, I think it's Leicester Northwest District, has been Andrew Bridgen. He was before that, I think, in, uh, in uh, a position where he'd run for uh, a council position or a, that of a councillor. And on every occasion, he'd increased his vote um, commensurately. Very, very well received. He was a, 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 people's, uh, a people's man and he wanted to get out there and he made real and meaningful changes. He's actually become a major whistleblower in the last period over Parliament. He's actually tried and made reports about the, um, the excess death due to co uh, corona or for the COVID uh, vaccination plans that had gone in, which weren't. Um, and uh, he's campaigned vigorously for truth to be revealed on many levels. Uh, if you want to go and have a look at some of the comments he'd made, uh, please go to uh, a, a YouTube channel. I think it's called GB Resistance and go and have a look at some of the, the interviews he's performed on there. But what we find then is go and have a look at the election results. We find not only did he lose his seat to uh, a Labour candidate, the first l woman Labour candidate ever to win that seat, but a Conservative came in second, and I don't even know whether he came in third. I haven't been able to find out that, uh, though hopefully he will be able to tell me that um, by, by return of message. So um, this is what we're up against. The chances of that happening, yes, they could happen, but isn't that just too big a coincidence? Isn't that not a bridge too far? Bridgen. So what we've got here is a, a statement to him that we don't want you around. You're not coming into Westminster. You can't join with the, the other favourite flavour on the block, which is going to be this Reform UK. And so we're coming down now to um, the meat again of why it's important now to listen to this message that I am delivering and I've delivered successfully or successively in the other videos time and time again for the last two years as I've slightly changed my tack here. One, hopefully you all know about Weirbank, weirbank.co.uk. Please go and look. If you want to look at things more political, removement.net, okay? Area52.life, though, is the place I'm encouraging you to go now. We have a very important treaty that we have formulated on there as a, uh, as a independent, unique state of which you have the entitlement of becoming a citizen of and joining. This is going to be massively important to you as we patrol now, uh, eggshell tiptoeing on, down over the next six to ten months. And why that's important is that if you join Area 52 and become a member, within the next three, I would say, to four weeks, we are going to be enrolling you now as citizens with the idea of producing a passport for you, which we're looking to take into a, um, into a, a, a digital format so we will be more easily uh, able to deliver that. And why that is very important is because um, you've got to eject this persona, this corporate identity, this legal fiction of being the all capitals or even lower capitals name that is birth certificated to you and has massive negative consequences. Article 6 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights basically says that everyone has the right to be recognized as a person before the law. There is a running, ongoing, rolling presumption that you are that, a person, a corporate identity or unincorporated identity, but nevertheless a man of straw, a straw man, a legal fiction, and any lawyer that tells you otherwise. Any uh, HMRC officer or government official that tells you otherwise, they're plain out either ignorant of it or just lying. So, moving forward, why it's important. You need to complete the 
declaration of divorce, you need to adopt and have ready what's called a G202P3 treaty. That's very important going forward. We, I am trying to offer some form of protection for you, for those who believe in God or spirits or angels or highly evolved extra dimensional beings, whether they are extraterrestrial in nature, they are metaterrestrial, they're extra biological entities, call them what you will. They exist and there is a means to uh, defang this political juggernaut in Westminster and in Europe. And why this is so uh, prevalent now, I'm going to touch on something now which um, I am not going to uh, release the details of because this is much too uh, small a platform for it to, um, to be voiced on. So if there's anyone out there who can put me in touch with someone who has uh, a, a, a viewing statistic um, in, the, in the millions, then I'll be prepared to consider it. So whether that would be Russell Brand, whether it be Joe Rogan, whether it be Tucker Carlson's channel, whether it will be the new emerged uh, Alex Jones one, um, or GB News, wherever uh, that would be, uh, I'll make a decision on that. But this is a very good get out of jail card for all of you. And if Farage had known about it, I don't know whether he would have used it. I doubt whether he does know, but it's something that's going to concern you all from early next year. And this is why it's so important to realize that Starmer isn't going to save you from what's called the DSU. It's the security union of the European Union, policed primarily by what's called Europol, Euro policing in that area. Now, this legislation that's coming in is called ETIAS, E-T-I-A-S, and it stands for European Travel Information and Authorization Service. Sounds great, doesn't it? With a little slash V-I-S, Visa Information Service. So from some time next year, this is applying to 1.4 billion people worldwide, and it is going to apply to over 30 countries. Um, whether you're in the Schengen area or in the European Union, uh, or not, uh, will be irrelevant because to travel across any border, you will require biometric identity. They will need photograph, they will need probably retinal imaging, they will need uh, a handprint or fingerprint and the payment of a fee. When all that is in and approved, or not, then you can either travel or you can not travel. There's a restriction on the number of days that you can spend in Europe, and you might say, well, that's something that uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not so bothered in, I don't travel. But what that will mean is that anyone that has to leave the UK and go into Europe will have to have these uh, infringements on their personal, sorry for using that word, but it's easier for me to say, and people understand it, on their identity and their, their, their uh, human rights not to be subjugated to a processing system which infers criminality and guilt as opposed to innocence and uh, a benign status. Now, that's pushing further and further down the road to assuming that you live uh, in, a, in, in a manner that is not acceptable to a higher authority or power. And I would suggest most people do not want to participate in it. In it. Area 52, area52.life will begin, begin now and in the process of issuing citizenship to anyone that wants it with a proof of citizenship, which is very important, and a document, probably a, um, a digital ID with a QR code onto their, their phone. 
because that's the way I think it's going. We will be able to produce a template for you, which you will easily be able to download. Just put your name and address on and send to members in the UK, in the government system, and also into the European Commission, the Minister for Justice. What you have to do, and please rewind this and listen again, if you do not claim this position, if you do not claim this sovereignty, then you will be estopped. Yeah? It's an estoppel by inaction. You didn't ask for it. They don't give it to you. So on a presumption and a series of assumptions, you proceed like you were. What we're going to carve out, and there's anyone out there that wants to help me, please get in touch and we will try and formulate something whereby you can help. Um, what we're going to do is put a cleavage. We're going to push this, the narrow end of the wedge into this European Union and divert it or derail it. The way of derailing it is the thing I've mentioned before that I will only uh, broach when I have a sufficiently large audience to do it. So that doesn't depend just on you. Still take the action. It will come. We are in God's hands. Their, their, their uh, plans might be foolproof, but they're certainly not God-proof, and that's what we're relying on. I just checked that I haven't left anything off. Oh, yeah, that was the point. So we're now in a situation where there's between, I don't know, conservative estimates, eight, could be as high as 14 million migrants have been allowed to come into the Eurozone over the last two, three years. They've been able to come in without proof that they, uh, they aren't carrying some strange lurgy or um, virus. They have been allowed to come in without passports, without being fingerprinted, without supposedly knowing who they are, where they come from, just the fact that they turn up on a boat. One of Farage's big uh, um, claims to fame and claims to be able to reveal um, or put a stop to this was one of the things he campaigned on. But what we have now is, and think of the ludicrous nature of this, now for people who are European citizens, people who are British, people who have through their ancestral work ensured the freedom of, of Europe, um, are now required to have fingerprints and photographs taken. And it says quite categorically on the ETIAS website that if you refuse to have your face photographed or face retinal scanned for an AI camera, or you refuse to give your fingerprints, you will not be allowed to enter. Okay, so, uh, and then finally, these four freedoms, which were guaranteed by the European Union when it first came into being and echoed, generally speaking, the, the main aspects of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, um, and that does include a right to travel freely, yeah, and so that's something we need to pick on. Article 15, Articles 18 and 20 as well. Nobody's mentioning this stuff, and this is what's called modal law. It was adopted by over 140-odd countries in the world when it was signed. So there is no way that they can push this agenda through, and I have the nail, the biggest nail you can imagine to drive into that coffin lid, but I need help. Yeah? Um, the four freedoms, as enunciated in the, uh, the, the founding documents of, uh, of the European Union, free movement, guarantee free movement of persons, services, goods, and capital. Well, none of that happens. You can't take as much as you want over a border in, in Europe. There's the 10,000 euro limit throughout the European Union. You can't even take it out to another country. So what we have to re remember is that persons, as defined, services, goods, and capital, what have they all in common? They're all non-living entities. They're goods, services, capital, money, and persons. A legal fiction, non-living, corporate, or unincorporated entity that has no independent life or existence. Thank you very much for listening.
Listen to all of this again. Send it to whoever you think. But please, please, I see that people aren't pressing the notification button and they're not knowing that the videos are, are, are online. I do them when I feel like doing them. Uh, but I assure you, you, if you don't do yourself or any of your friends ever again any favor other than passing this video on, then this is what you should do because they're going to be thankful for this as we get into a tighter, uh, a tighter indeterminacy as we go now into uh, an end of time scenario. Thank you.